what's going on so I wanted to make this video it's kind of overdue and I want to cover the CVT in the WRX and let you know why it operates the way it operates why it has the drive modes how it compares to other transmissions why is it in the WRX to begin with and basically clear up any misinformation you may have heard about this transmission I'm gonna cover the, the drive modes in the car and I'm gonna show you how they operate why they operate the way they operate obviously this video is geared towards beginners so bear with me a traditional transmission let's say a transmission has six gears right most transmissions out there have four to six gears some have three some have ten the most will have four to six these transmissions actually have a physical gear system that means that every gear actually has a gear set that locks on inside the transmission and allows the car to drive and when you're in that gear the ratio remains the same every gear in this example will present a different ratio to the output of the engine so let's say for first gear you have a, a ratio of 2.5 and then six gear you have a ratio of 0.4 so we got 2.5 to 1 and then 0.4 to 1 that means that in first gear your the output of your engine is 2.5 times faster than the output of your transmission so it's going 2.5 times to 1 and then on the other end of that on six gear is going 0.4 times the output of your transmission all right that's called overdrive anything above one to one is overdrive so in our hypothetical example here one through six we have first gear that allows us to take off and then we have six gear that allows us to go at 70 80 100 miles an hour and then sandwich in between you have third gear that presents something very close to one to one so the output of your transmission is equal to the output of your engine this is all the purpose of your automatic transmission whether you're going five miles an hour or you're going 100 miles an hour if your car is happy at 2500 to 3000 rpms that's what the transmission's job is to keep it around that range regardless of your speed so obviously it would be really nice to take those two gear ratios right the 2.5 and the 0.4 in the example that i gave and just add a ton of gears between those two because that would make the driving experience uh, much better right your car will be much more economical your your drive will be smoother you wouldn't really feel the the shifting of the, of the transmission your car would be more able to stay in the power band all the time so there's practical reasons why you can't do that obviously it would be cost prohibitive and there's limitations to how many gears and you know how many things you could put inside of the small transmission it might be too heavy there, there's a number of reasons why you can't just add you know 30 gears inside a transmission. That's where the CVT comes in. The CVT actually does do that. So a CVT, as opposed to a regular transmission, doesn't use the planetary gear sets that we talked about. It doesn't use all these gears. A CVT has two pulleys. It has a primary and it has a secondary pulley. Your power coming from your engine goes through a torque converter and then it goes through to your primary pulley. Your primary pulley is connected to the secondary pulley, which is the output to your wheels this is a very simplified uh, way of putting it but primary pulley and secondary pulley are connected to each other with a belt now the CVT and the WRX actually has a high torque chain and it also has high torque CVT fluid it has a special CVT fluid so these are things that Subaru did to allow a CVT the CVT and the, and the WRX to handle more horsepower and more torque but let's get back to task here so we have the output of the engine now going through the primary pulley. The primary pulley is connected to the secondary pulley with this chain. And every gear ratio that we talked about, so let's take the hypothetical transmission that we talked about a minute ago. Every gear ratio from 2.5 to 1 to 0.4 is represented between these two pulleys. That's why you will always hear people say that a CVT has infinite ratios. And that's because it goes from 2.5 in this example I'm making this number up but it goes from 2.5 to 0.4 in between those two extreme gear ratios the pulleys can stop at any point and give you any arbitrary uh, ratio between those two and that's why it's set to be infinite when you're taking the car off the primary pulley the two sides of the pulley are furthest apart and since the pulleys are shaped like a V this drops the high torque chain all the way to the bottom that means that the secondary pulley the two sides of the pulley will actually get closer together and this will bring the chain all the way out so this is taken off right first gear 
um, and all the way to 0.4 to 1 in our uh, hypothetical example, now the opposite is true. Now the top, the primary pulley, you have the two sides of the pulley pushed all the way in, bringing the high torque chain all the way to the edge of the pulley, and then the secondary pulley, they're pulled all the way out and the chain rides all the way inside. That's your overdrive, 0.4 to 1, gear 6, you're going 80, 100 miles down the road, whatever the case might be. Generally speaking, CVTs are not known to be very fun transmissions because they are so smooth and they allow the car to stay in whatever power band you actually tune the car for. Since they allow the car to stay in that particular power band, then there's not much fun to the driving experience in them. So they're typically used in smaller cars that are not a, a lot of fun to drive, right? Uh, you wouldn't very necessarily expect to see a CVT in a performance car. So right off the bat, it's kind of odd that Subaru would pick a CVT for the WRX. But they did, and they did it very well. So now we know that the CVT does exactly what a regular transmission does, but it does it in a much different way. So given how the job of a CVT is to be continuously variable and to take away as much input from the driver as possible and to keep the RPM range as constant as possible. Given all those things, how can you possibly take a transmission like that, put it in the WRX in a way that is fun to the driver, in a way that does justice to the car, the WRX, right? I think actually Subaru did a great job. And the way that they did that is by giving you tons of power and control over the transmission, okay? You might think that you don't, and especially if you don't own the car, but you'd be surprised at how much control you have. So the cars are an automatic to begin with, right? We have an automatic car. If you want to drive the car with the full benefit of um, CVT transmission, you put the car on intelligent mode. When you put the car on intelligent mode and you drive around town, the transmission will be continuously variable, and you will go from a standstill to you know 70 miles an hour with very little movement of the RPM, the needle. That's your CVT changing continuously and giving the transmission infinite ratios. If you're in unintelligent mode and you want to be a little more aggressive and have more fun, how can you tell the car, hey, I know you're an automatic, but I wanna have a little bit more fun. The car will know based on how far down you have the gas pedal pressed, okay? This is critical. When you hit the gas pedal to 40% and beyond, the car shifts from being continuously variable to stepped. And what it does when it's in that mode is that it goes to preset gear ratios and it stays there. So instead of being continuously variable and moving the pulleys as you're driving and as your speed is changing, the pulleys will stay at their preset ratios for as long as you, if you have the car manual, for as long as you have the car in that particular gear. Now, if you don't have the car in manual, if you have the car in intelligent mode, automatic, and you go past 40%, it will still do that, but the car will shift for you like a regular traditional transmission, right? While it's very economical to be at 2,500 RPMs or 2,000 RPMs, actually, this car loves to be around 2,000 RPMs. So while that's very economical for the car, that's not very fun for the driver in a WRX, right? We like it more around 35, 4,500 RPMs. That's where the car gets really fun. So when you are on this mode, when you're past 40% and you're trying to drive the car in a spirited way, the more you put push on the gas pedal, the further down the RPM range your transmission is going to go. It's going to allow you to go you know, well past 4,000, 5,000 RPMs all the way to red line. It's going to allow you to do that. And then eventually it'll shift on its own back to a more reasonable ratio so you don't damage the engine. That's the reason why we have these preset fake gears that everybody says are just programmed in there for the sake of it. So you might ask, why not just have the CVT climb up there where it makes the most torque and just kind of stay there and give the, the driver that possibility all the time? Imagine if your car was always ready to be at 4,500 RPMs. Your car would be loud. Your car would, would be very jerky. If it did that all the time, the longevity of your car would suffer quite a bit. Obviously your fuel mileage would be horrendous. Your car would basically need to be maintained like a stage three car all the time. That's the reason why the CVT doesn't just go to that sweet spot and, and stay there for you um, all the time. Incidentally, there is one mode that allows you to do that. 
that, that mode is there because it's supposed to only be a temporary thing and that's a launch control and when you launch your car in launch control it'll go to I think it's 5500 rpms I haven't done it in a while but it'll go to 5500 rpms and it'll stay there and it'll allow you to go you know to infinity and beyond at 5500 rpms it isn't until you let go of the gas that it actually starts going back down so let me get back to intelligent mode and I'm actually on a good road here to show you what that looks like so I'm gonna turn around so I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to keep it, you can see up there the accelerator percentage, and I'm going to keep it below 40%. And notice how constant the RPMs stay based on my speed. So I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to go to whatever speed I can get up to here. And I'm never going to go over 40% so that you can see how the CVT operates in, in that scenario. So here I go. You see how my speed is increasing, but my RPMs aren't changing? The only reason why it's doing that is because the accelerator pedal is below 40%. So I'm going 60 miles an hour and I never went over 2000 RPMs. That's the CVT, that's the magic of the CVT. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be more aggressive, I'm gonna stop again, and I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive with it. And instead of taking off at whatever I was at, 20% gas pedal, I'm gonna go above 40% so you can see what the car does in that scenario. So let me show you real quick what happens when I go over 40%. Instead of staying nice and, nice and constant, you're gonna notice the RPMs go up and then drop back down because the car is in stepped mode. So pay attention to the accelerator percentage and the RPMs and the speed. Watch RPMs. See how they drop as it change gears? Okay. I'll slow it down so I don't get a ticket here. But when I went over 40%, the car was no longer continuously variable and it went into stepped mode. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you go on sports mode, it'll do the same exact thing, but it'll do it at 30% instead of uh, 40%. And that's a way that Subaru takes the CVT in the WRX and allows you to target high RPMs. It's got nothing to do with making you feel like you're driving a regular transmission. Why only have that when you are above a certain percentage on the accelerator pedal? It's doing that because it's allowing you to target higher RPM. Because that's where the car is torquey, that's where the car is fun. Sport Sharp Mode doesn't even have a CVT uh, function within it. The transmission, the pulleys are going to eight preset ratios and they're staying there. I'm gonna put the car on Sport Sharp Mode here. So I'm about to make a left here, and I want to show you that it doesn't, it doesn't behave in a CVT way at all. So you're going to see the RPMs rise and drop just like a regular transmission. I'm trying to turn slowly so my camera doesn't fall. Watch the RPMs. The ratios are very close together. That's why it doesn't get very far before it drops down. Why do that at all? Again, it's doing that because if at any point during any one of those gears, you decided hey I want to get going on it now and you hit the gas then you can actually control the output of the CVT through the gas pedal okay, that's why it's doing that it's allowing you to target those higher RPMs and it's allowing you to go well past whatever point the car thinks is economical and, and makes the best fuel economy so that the car is fun so if I hit the gas right now see how it stays So you control, you end up controlling the car with the gas pedal. I hope that illustrates how the CVT operates in the WRX and why it's not just faking gears for the sake of faking gears. So remember earlier when I said that it wouldn't be economical or good for the car to always be at 4,000, 5,000 RPMs? You can do that yourself. And the way that you do that is by putting the car on manual mode. So right now I'm in manual mode, right? And I'm in fifth gear. I'm gonna drop down to say third gear and get to about 3,500, 4,000 RPMs where the car makes a lot of power and it's really fun to drive. So if you wanna be around that area, drop your gear. I'm at 3,500 3, RPMs, now I'm in third gear. Notice how loud the car is, right? If I hit the gas now, I mean, it gets going. So on manual mode, you have all the power of a regular manual transmission, most of the power. You don't have a clutch, obviously, so you can't just mess around with the RPMs without having the transmission engaged. 
and the only time that you can do that is while you're parked obviously or in neutral and then there's a rev limiter that doesn't allow you to go past 4,000 rpms right now i'm in uh fifth gear and i'll put it on sixth gear sixth gear takes me to about 1500 rpms at this speed so that that's a bit too low not good for the engine either so i'll drop it back to fifth gear and keep it 2000 2500 rpms this car is perfectly happy at 2000 to 2500 rpms if you're not beating it right if you're just driving it around town if you're beating it you definitely want to be a little bit higher in the rpm range you don't want to hit the gas aggressively at a high gear that's a good way to ruin your transmission another thing i want to mention about the drive modes in the wrx is that i just put the car back in automatic right so i'm about to make this right and even though i'm in fully automatic mode right now at any point in time if i want to change the characteristics of the transmission to a stepped mode i can always use the paddle shifter so let me show you what that looks like right i'm on drive right now if i downshift if i hit the downshift even though i'm not on manual mode the car will still find the lower ratio and it'll go there and it'll stay there so there you go i just did it so now the car's in fourth gear and that's just temporary until your gas pedal normalizes and once it normalizes and knows everything's good to go then it drops it goes back into automatic mode really really neat feature because it allows you to drive the car on automatic mode and if you need to pass it's very easy to tap it once or even tap it twice and get into that torquey 4000 rpms and you're gone that's real time all the time really cool feature of the car we started with a car with a cvt and a boring transmission and next thing you know we have three drive modes and within two of the drive modes there are two modes one is continuously variable mode and then the other is stepped mode so now those three drive modes turned into five drive modes each one of those modes can also be operated in manual mode so now we went from five to eight drive modes eight different driving experiences if you don't know that and if you don't know how they operate you will think that this car is very unpredictable you will think that the car uh, doesn't behave like you want it to you won't be able to appreciate it so i hope the video cleared up how the cvt operates and how the drive modes work I realized it was a bit long-winded, so I appreciate you making it to the end. Make sure to give it a like if it was useful to you, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks a lot for watching, and take care.